There is a serious trend of 20 and 30 something couples who invest years and even a decade in a relationship without the intention of ever getting married. Honestly, I don't think there is um, a definite time. There is definite time for you to actually date someone to know them. You can date someone for years and still not know who they are, or you can date someone for a few months and actually know who they are. And I feel like the. Okay, you know people the longer you stay with them. That's the mentality. Like, the longer you stay with a person, the more you know them. Because people can't keep pretending for years. You started dating first few months, he was acting so well. And then two years later, he's a different person. <laughs> so I, I guess, yes, because you need to know who this person is and if you guys are actually compatible, if you can actually be together. Human nature changes. You may know someone for seven years, but as soon as they put the ring, they just become a shadow figure. Now, Pion has a sama kipindi kirefu. That's also now another problem. Because you might feel like it's good in a short time, but then challenges come. The time you take before you get married should be t determined by, like, you want to find out, like, you know the person's vision, you know, where do you want to head? Because it's not all about lovey-dovey and all, you know? Just because two people play house by cohabiting or taking vacations with each other's families, that doesn't necessarily equate to marriage. You should, um, you know, be with someone who your visions kind of go together, you understand? So that even in your house, the way you relate and all that in the future will be in a way of understanding. When he speaks about this, he's speaking about dribbling and all that stuff and you're not seeing stars, you understand. You see, so I think you should um, take uh, time to help you, you know, know the person, where they're heading, what they like, you know, how will what you're doing and what he's doing affect you in the future and all those things, not just emotions. And I think actually to decide to get married to someone, please, it's, it's more advisable, shut out the love first and consider other things. Yes, love is important, it plays a big role, but shut it out fast and look at other important things. Cohabitation is happening at large, especially in urban areas, but is it something that most parents approve of? I come from a family that sees marriage as, uh, okay, it's a very important part of, of someone's life. So my mom will never allow me to just be in a relationship long term without getting married. It's like security, it's commitment, it's this is it for life. So plus it's legal, I mean it's been legalized. So it means I'm married to this person. The government recognizes that I'm married to this person. Everyone else recognizes that I'm married to this person. It's, it brings you respect, first and most of all. In 1960, non-marital births were quite rare. Today, about two-fifths of all births are to unmarried women. This resulted from a complicated combination of moral and behavioral changes. It depends with your choice, because at the end of the day, when you look at what's currently happening, we have a lot of broken families, we have a lot of children who are orphans, they don't have anyone to take care of them. But what I believe in, if uh, there is someone who feels like they'll be responsible enough to take care of children, then it, that's your opinion. That's, you, that's, don't that's, that's, you don't have to be married, but if you feel like uh, you can be responsible enough, you can take that challenge. My question is, so you're deciding to bring up a child, um, either a single mother or single dad. The question is, if you're a mother, who, who will take the responsibility of the father? Like, who would be the male figure? Child. Yeah. Societal trends have made unmarried childbearing and fornication more acceptable, such that half of births from non-marital pregnancies today are intentional. I believe in baby mamas, no lie. Um, but I wouldn't want my yeah, but I wouldn't want my kids to have different mothers, so I'd do it with one single chick. But one marriage, mom. nah, that's a lie. That's a rumor. Young couples today simply do not feel the need to marry when a baby gets into the picture. I don't vouch for that because 
um, I, I, like a woman can't say like, I'll bring up this child alone because human beings are relational beings. And if you actually go to the way of, you know, I want a child, as a woman, there's something you can teach a, a child, a son or a daughter, but there's something a father, there's a role a father also plays. And if at all, um, they, there would be something like, you know, being independent and all, then why can't you get that child by your own? You know, why go look for a man to give you a child? Can you, you understand? So uh, it, it's a role that should be played by two people. And you know this thing of, um, you know, I want to be independent on my own, have my own kid. It's not your own kid because it happened with two people and it cannot be your own. It's not all about, you know, relationships. It's not all about companionship, you being affectionate. I think it's about fulfilling your purpose. And for you to fulfill your purpose, you have to have someone to, you know, encourage you, someone to push you and all that. So I really don't think you can do it independently. We need each other. Or unless you're taking it as vocational or so, but we need each other. Parental responsibility is mandatory and cannot be left to a single parent alone. But there are circumstances where one gets selfish and inconsiderate. I have been raised by very amazing parents and I would love to make such an amazing like family for my kids too. Why do you feel like it would be fair for you to just have your own child without its dad? Because there's a reason why there's a dad in the family. Yeah? Why are we so pessimistic? Why isn't there optimism anymore? I'm still hopeful that they are amazing men, you know? The same way there's good, there's bad, you know? And the fact that Apparently, when, uh, where we are now, bad seems to be what is trending. I believe there's still good, you know? There's still so much good, and I am very optimistic, and I, w I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to focus so much on the fact that there's divorce and forget about the fact that there's a happy marriage somewhere, you know? Because there are people with happy marriages as well somewhere. Why don't you focus on the good as well? You know, why is everyone just divorced? No marriage. No, 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 no. Why can't someone say, you know what? You know, people are dating and they're so negative. So why are you dating? Because it seems you've already made up your mind about the future anyway. Then be single. You know, I'm still kind of hopeful. Divorce and marital breakdown is on the rise in our society. Couples break up on a whim, even before the ink on their marriage certificates has dried. I would rather be a single mother if the father and I don't actually get along. It's, it's, I, I don't think it's worth it making a kid grow up in an environment that is so toxic, that they grow up with that mentality. You know, whatever kids see at home is exactly how they think things are supposed to be done. If I grew up in a family where people fight, I would think it's normal for people to fight. So I don't think it's worth it for my child to grow up in an environment where he sees me fighting with the father. He's not going to grow up with very good uh, expectations or behaviors. So no, I would rather be a single mother. We see this rising um, numbers of a lot more people getting divorced, right? We should really ask ourselves the question, are, are couples prepared? Um, are they adequately prepared for the institution of marriage? Not just them, but the, 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 their families, their communities, their ummah as a Muslim. Are, are we preparing? Do we have the right structures? Are we supporting our young people? Are we, are we equipping parents to be very intentional um, in their parenting? Because it all stems back to what's going on at home. How were you raised? What did you see growing up? What value system was, it, was um, imprinted in you? How did you, how did you understand about yourself? Um, were you able to cultivate a level of resilience? Um, and resilience here is really talking about the ability to weather challenges. Because, because um, the way that we've been built is that we have the ability to withstand um, a significant amount of stress that is structured. We, we are built that, our systems are built that. Um, but then um, 
but then obviously it has to contain until a certain point and then after that it just disrupts the whole system. So do we cultivate that among our young people? Um, do, we, do, we, do, we, do we cultivate the ability to be curious, to be vulnerable with themselves and with their partner? Um, do, we, do we teach about conflict resolution or do we tell people, you know, we just placate them and tell them this is just how things are? The, that doesn't count anymore. If I got into the marriage and everything was working out, then all of a sudden I'm unhappy. I'll do it for, my, for me. If I'm not happy, I'll walk away. And as much as it's going, to, okay, yeah, I get it. It divorce is sad. It breaks the children, and their mentalities get screwed up over marriage and all those things. But I believe that if something is best for you, you have to do it. If walking away is what is going to give you the peace of mind, then you can do it. I can't stay in a marriage where my husband beats me every single night, or he comes home drunk, he sleeps with other women, but I'm just supposed to stay there because. I signed a sheet saying for better or worse, or I made a vow saying for better or worse for each of poor, but you don't treat me the way I deserve to be treated. I'm sorry. Deuces. Six percent of women aged 20 to 24 are already divorced or separated, and this was not the case some decades ago. Everybody has his or her breaking points. If you go past that, like in somebody, somebody can just lose it and uh, can do something that he or she might regret later. So if you feel like that relationship ain't working for you, just come to a mutual agreement and say, uh, let's go and try other guys. I've worked in the, in the Cardi's court uh, for some time, and when people come for a divorce, they really have this hatred in them. They really hate each other, and uh, to some point, they harm each other. And uh, into the marriage, there are some rules and regulations that you need to, to, to follow. What I would say, what is lacking is conflict resolution. Sometimes people are usually facing problems in their marriages, but they usually go ahead and say that we have to stay together because of the kids or so that the kids have this per, um, perspective of a family. But I feel like if you're staying together for the kids and you're the one hurting, like your husband is beating you up, this guy is capable of killing you and once like once he kills you what will the children have to say so like you should be a bit selfish such that you put yourself first and know that um i can't be in a relationship with this guy anymore because he doesn't respect me such that we can't talk about something he feels like he has to raise his hand and beat me so just think sometimes think of yourself first and just yeah before you make some decisions these rising divorce rates have prompted the yet unmarried question, the status of marriage in society. Our parents didn't get married. It wasn't just the individual. It was families, it was communities. Um, my understanding of indigenous cultures, African cultures, is that marriage was seen as a rite of passage. And so prior to being married, you were prepared for marriage. And then when you're getting married, <clears throat> and you are married, you're not just married to your partner, to your husband, or to your wife, you also have a support system, and uh, a system built, built of your, fam your biological family and your extended family. So being married was, just, was not a solitary affair, but a communal affair, because they understood the success of marriages unions was the success of the family which was which led to the success of the community we've lost that there are things that can be talked over and discussed and there are things that can be fixed but there's a certain extreme that people reach and it's beyond fixable it's beyond mending so instead of you pretending and staying there things will be worse if you if it's pretense and in the same house it will be What's for the kids because it will reach a point you don't even feel like coming home. You come home at whatever time you want. So sometimes it's not worth it. If it's not working, it's not working. Just call it quits. You can see your kid. there's a mutual agreement. You come see the kids, I come see the kids. If, if, you look, if you look at what's happening in the States, for instance, whereby they say almost 50% of marriages end with divorce, right? Um, that tells you there's something fundamentally not that is incongruence in the marriage system. There is a disalignment of values and folks who are getting married and, and, and structures and institutions that support marriage. 
Could it be that this generation is quick to react and go for the easier option of separation rather than choosing to try and work things out by engaging outside forces? We don't have this, uh, the, 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 the confidence and, and the know-how of how we can uh, face challenges in, in our marriages. We only think that uh, marriage is, is, is a highway to, to, to Jannah. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put Jannah as a tag on it, uh, this is half your deen, all this, it comes at a price. So we need to, as, as parents, when we need to, to advise our youth before marriage, what they should expect inside the marriage, how to communicate to our spouses, how we're supposed to do it. These things are expected. People will fight inside the marriage. But once you have a fight, does it mean it is all over? No. You can still come back and resolve the issues. Like That's honestly, if you got into that relationship and you legit cared about that person, yeah. divorce is not a solution. But you know that those people who get into marriage for the sake of, oh, you're wealthy, oh, yeah. I'm just in a hurry, that mm. one, if Time you get a going. divorce, you know, it's it's inevitable, there's no fixing. But if you legit care about that person, don't be quick. Yeah, you'll work, yeah, you'll work, work towards to, to actually save your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Six months is not enough for you to know your wife and to know your husband or a year or something like this. You don't even have kids, you're already fed up with everyone. People, I mean, I've seen people who have lived for 35 years and they've come for a divorce. They come with their grandchildren. And so uh, the whole concept of divorce needs to be, to, be, to be made not so simple, like end up when you just go back to where you come from, Mama to come They need to have um, a mechanism that we can resolve issues amongst the youth when they get married. If you have an issue in marriage, I don't think divorce should be the first thing on your mind. You should talk it out to the person. And like she said, if it's not talkable, like if someone raises their hands on you, that is a walkout direct. Because the first time they do it, it's just going to be a continuous thing. But apart from um, raising a hand, I think other issues can be discussed. And marriage should be the last thing you guys should think of, regardless whether you have kids or not. So for me, marriage is a commitment. When you get into marriage, you have to find all possible ways to work it out. So the whole mechanism of divorce, it is halal, but it needs to have stages that you can reach to a point that you can say, now me and you need to part. And if we part, does that mean we become enemies? No, it doesn't. Sometimes there's a lot um, of damage done to the children. A father divorces the wife and divorces the children. The mother divorces the father and divorces the children. These things come back to us. The children get frustrated. I mean, broken marriages, sometimes the, the, the weight is more on the child than to the spouses that they get divorced. So our society is getting by day rotten and rotten. A single mothers, single fathers, children don't have a figure father, a father figure at home. They just rowdy. All, I mean, the situation is pathetic and it needs to be addressed and we ask our ulama to have a clear mechanism on how the youth can engage before, during and after marriage. It is very important.